Hi! In this video, let's set up a custom low distortion projection while we're in the field with no prior knowledge. So, we're uh, pretending to be in Browns Park. We're going to occupy the southeast corner of section 14 and the northeast corner of section 14. I've got a base set up over here. Um, and uh, so let's get started. I think the first thing we'll do is we'll make a new job. So I'm going to make a new job called LDDP2 because and let's start out in Utah Central which is the base zone for this area. Let's store the southeast corner. So we'll go to survey and store points. Let's name the southeast corner SE and we'll store it. And now let's move up to the northeast corner. And let's call it NE and we'll store that corner. Let's go to Kogo and inverse. Let's see how far it is between those two points. In fact, I'm going to copy this result and paste it over here. You'll see the distance is 5283.675. Well, that's pretty neat. Let's make a new projection. Now, to do that, I'm going to need the latitude and longitude in decimal degrees. To get it, I'll go to File, and then Job Settings. And on the System tab, I can change the latitude and longitude to degrees, minutes, seconds. Now, to get the latitude and longitude of point number one, I can do that by going to COCO, and then Calculator. Then up on the top here, choose Latlon Height to Grid. But actually, we're going to recall the grid coordinates for point number one, which is our southeast corner. And then we're going to back solve for the latitude and longitude. And I'll copy this number, paste it over here in my notebook. Pretend this is my field notebook. And then we'll get the longitude and paste it over here in our field notebook. Well, let's go back, and before we go any further, let's go back to degrees, minutes, seconds, because it'll be a shock to me if I end up looking at a latitude and longitude, and it's in decimal degrees, because I can only do degrees, minutes, and seconds. Well, the next thing we need to do is make a new projection, and we can do that under Equipment, Localization, and then we can go to the System tab and click on Edit Projection List. Let's make a new user-defined projection and let's call it uh, Browns Park Southeast 14. I might put an LDP on there. Now, I don't know the scale factor yet. But I do know that the central meridian is going to be that number. And this is very important. If you're in this hemisphere, don't forget to put in a minus sign. If you forget, you'll build a LDP on the other side of the planet. It won't work very well. Let's make our latitude of origin be the latitude of the southeast corner. Now, I'd like it to be 10,000, 10,000. And if I put an F after it, SurfCE will convert that to meters for me. That looks great. Let's click the green check mark. Click the green check mark again. And we'll click it a third time. Now let's go see what the coordinates where we're at are. 
I go to monitor sky plot. Ah, you see that I'm at the northeast corner. The easting's about right, and the northing's 5283. Let's go back to the southeast corner and just make sure that it's 10,000, 10,000. Well, that's pretty close. Great, so we've got our LDP defined, but it's defined at the ellipsoid, so our distances are still grid. So let's get a scale factor that's correct. We could do that by going to localization, and then on the GPS tab, we can click on grid to ground, and oh, we're standing at the southeast corner now, so all we need to do is read the GPS receiver. Alternatively, we could go into the uh, advanced tool calculator and we could calculate it. One, two, three, two, five, seven, eight, three, seven, five, oh, five. So, one thousand two, two, five, seven, eight, three, seven, five, oh, five. Looks perfect. So uh, we're not going to want that. So I'll turn off the grid to ground. We'll go back to system. Let's edit our projection list. Let's edit our custom projection. And we'll just copy that scale factor, which is the right scale factor, right into this box here. And click the green check mark. Click the green check mark again. Go back to the main menu. Now, everything should be correct. Oh. But you'd like me to show you that that's the right scale factor, probably. If we go back to GPS and grid to ground and we read the GPS, you'll see that our combined scale factor now to get us to ground would need to be so close to one that we don't need to worry about it. Turn that off. Come back. I'm going to reprocess the raw file. That'll take the two points that I already stored, move them to ground 10,000, 10,000 with a true north basis of bearing. So we can go to File, Raw Data. Okay, that's the right file. Process GPS. Projection. That's correct. Click on the green check mark. Oh, that looks good. Let the red back arrow, the red X, and then we'll save the coordinates to our point list. So now if we go to points, you see we've got a 10,000, 10,000 point, and we got a northing and easting for our northeast corner. What do you think the distance is between those two points? Well, we can go to COCO, inverse, and then let's inverse between 1 and 2 copy this off again. Put it over here so we can compare them. So now our horizontal distance is 5284, 641. Remember we're 5283, 675. That looks right. So what we've done is in the field with no prior knowledge of any of the coordinates or anything, we've created a low distortion projection that is transverse Mercator. It's based at the southeast corner of the section. It has an appropriate scale factor to bring us to ground. And at that southeast corner, true north is our basis of bearings. Seems almost perfect. Well, if you liked this video and you think you might like to watch more videos like it when they're produced, if you look down at the bottom, there's a subscribe button. If you click it and turn that on, the YouTube people will send you a, a note or something every time I make a new video. Have a great survey day, and I'll see you in the next video.